morning, Stats fan. How are we doing on this fine Monday morning? Beautiful sunny day out there. Weatherman says it's going to be nice out there today. Hopefully he gets out saying get some fresh air. Uh, it's a beautiful day out there. So please try to get some fresh air. Open up some windows. Maybe open up some windows out there. Hope everything's going well for you and your family. Hope you're staying down this free. Uh, once again, keep your social distancing out there. Um, but I hope everything's going well from you. Uh, some of you still need to do the stats test. Uh, please get that completed um, and all the work uh, completed from last week. Uh, we have one more topic that we have to cover, which is hypothesis testing. Okay, hypothesis testing is the last thing we'll cover. Uh, that will take about two weeks to be able to get through the hypothesis testing. Um, then we'll prep for a final and we'll have a final. So hopefully within the second to third week of May, we will be done with this class and no more material that we'll be covering. Um, it'll take about two weeks to get through the hypothesis testing. And once again, we'll have some quizzes on that. And then we'll spend two or three days prepping for a final and then we'll have a final and we'll be done. So hopefully that third week of May somewhere in there will be done. You've done a nice job. You've really done a nice job. We don't always have to think about sitting in a classroom to be able to learn. You've been able to do that um, outside of the classroom through the use of videos and through the worksheets and your hard work that you have done. Um, you've done a nice job of keeping up with the material. So that's a growth mindset in regards to, we're used to our status quo of what we used to do as a teacher or as a teacher or as a student, but can we do this outside of what is our status quo, our plan B? And yes, you are. You're doing a great job of doing that. So still continue to keep up with the work, you know, keep up with the material that we've been dealing with here. Uh, today we're gonna talk about what is hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing. Confidence intervals, so we deal with confidence intervals. It is an estimation of a population parameter. Confidence intervals is what we just did in the last chapter, chapter six. We got two values and we said, okay, we are 99% confident that the population mean is going to be between these two values. Okay, that was confidence intervals. Okay, what we're gonna, or a proportion, or a, a uh, standard deviation. What we'll be dealing with is what is called hypothesis testing. And this is the last of the basis of what we do statistically wise. The hypothesis testing, you assess evidence from data for a claim about a population parameter. Suppose, suppose that if I drop this baseball, Sir Fig of Isaac Newton said, it's gonna drop at 9.81 meters per second squared. That was the acceleration rate. Starts at zero every second, it's gonna increase the velocity at 9.81 meters per second, okay? I don't believe that. I don't believe Sir Fig of Isaac Newton, okay? So what I do is I do a statistical analysis. I do an experiment. I look at, a, do an experiment in a lab. I write down my procedure. I gather data. From that data, I then assess my data uh, and my hypothesis that, you know what, Sir Fig of Isaac Newton was incorrect. And I get data to be able to back up what I state. That is what hypothesis testing is. If you think back to when you're over in science class, you talked about a hypothesis. Hypothesis was an educated guess. An educated guess. That education comes from some maybe from, from, from experience or what I have dealt with, or what I've been able to measure, and that was my experience, so I gathered data. Okay, that was the education part of the guess. It's an educated guess that's out there. So we'll talk about hypothesis testing, assess the evidence from data, and claim about a population parameter. We may not totally believe that Sir Fig of Isaac Newton stated this was 9.81 meters per second when I drop it, okay? So if it's not there, then what do we do? So when we're talking about hypothesis testing, once again, this is a decision-making process for evaluating claims about the population. Okay, we are going to have a decision-making process for evaluating claims about the population. And once again, if I'm going too fast, just hit your pause button. I won't talk, I promise. 
and catch up. Statistical hypothesis. It is a conjecture about a population parameter. A statement. This conjecture may or may not be true. Me say 9.81 meters per second squared. That may or may not be true. Probably not going to be true. Okay. Sir Fig of Isaac Newton was pretty smart up here. He, he, he's probably a little, he probably calculated that a little bit better. Okay, so it's a statistical hypothesis, a conjecture about a population parameter. This conjecture may or may not be true. Hypothesis, you have an accepted value about a population parameter. Sir Fig of Isaac Newton was accepted. Was the accepted value for acceleration of gravity? 9.81 meters per second squared. That's an accepted value. We have two different types of hypotheses we're going to be working with. We have a null hypothesis and we have an alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a statistical hypothesis that states there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value or that there is no difference between two parameters. Now remember when we're talking about parameters, we're talking about population. We're talking about population, and what we'll be dealing with is a population mean, or a population standard deviation. So we'll be discussing these parameters about the population mean or standard deviation. And we'll look at samples, we'll look at a sample to be able to gauge the trueness of a population. So the null hypothesis and how we signify, signify that is H subscript zero. That's your null hypothesis. No hypothesis is typically, in 99% of the problems, is an accepted value to be tested. Okay, most of the problems will be an accepted value that's already there. Just like we said with Sir Fig of Isaac Newton, that was the accepted value. We're going to test that value. That's an accepted value. The alternate hypothesis which is H subscript one, depends on what book you're dealing with here. Sometimes you'll see HA, ha, the alternate hypothesis, or H1. Both of them are alternate hypothesis. I'll tend to use HA a little bit more because I like just the A there for the alternate. Okay, so we have a, a null hypothesis, which is typically an accepted value, and we have an alternate hypothesis is a statistical value that states there exists a difference between the population or between the parameter and a specific value or states there's no there is a difference between the two parameters okay we will first start talking about initial just accepting 9.81 as of gravity for gravity uh, but then we will eventually go into uh, comparing two means, like say the, the mean salary for Dalton, household income for Dalton, compared to the mean household uh, income for Apple Creek or for Maslin. We'll talk about, we'll compare them. So right now we'll just compare the mean uh, to a specific value. Uh, but eventually we'll compare two different parameters. The alternate hypothesis, and once again, you can have that as HA. Most of the time is what we hope is true. It's what we hope is true. I don't believe 9.81, I believe it's 9.79. That's what I hope is true. 9.79 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of gravity, not 9.81. Sir Fig was wrong.
he is correct. But what I hope is true is it's 9.79. When hypothesis testing, we gather evidence against the hypothesis. Okay, and how we gather that is through experiment and through labs, or we do surveys. Somehow, however we gather data, we gather evidence, and this is data, data-driven. Right now, uh, the state of Ohio, United States, is continuing to gather data about the coronavirus. Okay, they continue to gather this data. Okay, and about a hypothesis. Okay, if you remember the bell-shaped curve that was initially there. This is what they were fearing in March was going to happen. And now what has happened is it just keeps on spreading itself out further and further and further, which is a good thing. That's the data that they continue to get. That's why they want so many tests being done right now for the coronavirus, okay? So they can gather data. When they gather data, they can make predictions. Okay, the more data they gather, the better the prediction is. Okay, because of the law of large numbers. Remember the law of large numbers? The more data points we can get, the better we're going to be able to predict what's going to occur. We look at the probability of observing an outcome. Nothing there. If the probability is sufficiently small, It leads us to doubt the initial claim. And we will either be able to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So two situations are gonna occur. We're either gonna reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We still may not accept it, but we just don't have enough evidence to reject it yet. So what we might do is we might gather more data, more data, more data, and then we can maybe reject the null hypothesis. Because what ultimately we want is true is the alternate hypothesis. Today, all we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on stating a null and alternate hypothesis. That's all we're gonna work on today. And the worksheet I have um, that I posted for you on, on Classroom, um, all that you're gonna do on that worksheet today is state the null and alternate hypothesis. You're not gonna do any other calculations, even though those calculations that are there when you look at solutions, you're not looking to do any of those calculations yet. We will work on that tomorrow. Okay, today we just have to worry about how do we state a null hypothesis? How do we state an alternate hypothesis? And that's the backside of our worksheet here. A researcher thinks that expectant mothers use vitamin pills. If they use vitamin pills, the birth weight of the babies will increase the average birth weight. Okay, will increase. When, ba when, we, when babies are born, the more weight there is there, the, the doctors feel the more healthier, or, <laughs> don't tell Mr. McFerrin I said that, the more healthy the baby is. If you don't have much weight there, it, the baby is going to struggle a little bit more and they want to continue to increase that weight. So what they try to do is with the prenatal vitamins is give them and so we can have an average birth weight that's increasing and that means that the baby will be stronger. Okay, so a researcher thinks if the expected mothers use a certain vitamin pill, the birth weight of the babies will increase. The average birth weight is now 8.6 pounds. Okay, so what this person hopes to be true is that we will increase the baby's weight. Okay, we will increase this average weight that we have here. So typically when we're dealing with null, null and alternate hypothesis, 
What I suggest you do is you write the alternate hypothesis first because it's easier to figure out what we hope is true. Well, what he hopes is true is that we're gonna increase the birth weight. Well, that birth weight is 8.6, that's the mean. We don't know how much it's gonna increase, we just want it to be bigger than 8.6. Well, how do we write that mathematically bigger than 8.6? Well, we want this mean oopsie, to be bigger than 8.6 pounds. And when we write bigger, well, it's just greater than. We don't know how big or how much greater, but we just hope it's going to be greater than 8.6. That's what we hope is true. Now, when we go, once we do this, we go back to null hypothesis and we go into SpongeBob opposite day. What is opposite than greater than? Well, less than or also equal to. So the null hypothesis is less than or equal to 8.6 pounds. Now equality will always go with the null hypothesis. So if you're trying to figure out where to put the equality at, okay, it's always gonna go with the null hypothesis. That's all I'm gonna ask you to do in your, on your homework today. Read the problems and look at your null and alternate hypothesis. Let's take a look at another one. An engineer hypothesizes that the mean number of defects that can, can be decreased in a manufacturing process of CDs, that's compact disc for your, that's what your parents used to listen to on the radio. They didn't have the iPads and iPods to listen to music. They didn't have the aux cord that they can plug into your car. Okay, they had to pop in a CD. Okay, so if we use robots instead of humans for certain tasks, we can decrease the number of defects. The, number, the mean number of defects is 18 per thousand. So once again, let's start with, start with the alternate hypothesis. What does he hope to be true? Well, he hopes that this mean is going to be less than, smaller than, the 18 per thousand. Now the Null hypothesis, which is the second thing we do. What is opposite to less than? Well, that means mu is going to be greater than or equal to 18 per thousand. A psychologist feels that playing soft music during a test will change the result of the test. He's not sure if it will increase or rise or lower. In the past, the mean score was 7.3. So if he feels he plays some Beethoven during a test, rather than some uh, Van Halen or some Led Zeppelin uh, or some Florida Georgia Line, okay? If you play some Beethoven, some soft elevator music during that time, it's gonna change the mean score. Now, some of you may be repulsed by that, that type of music. You sit there, ew, I'm focused on that ucky music. I don't like it. I don't like listening to it in the elevator. And I, I get focused on that rather than my test. And my test score goes down. Or you might sit there and say, you know what? It's, it's going to soothe my mind. It may go up. So we don't know if it's going to go up or down. Well, how do we deal with that with the null and alternate hypothesis? Well, we're still dealing with the mean. We don't know if it's going to be bigger than or smaller than. We just know it's going to change it. So if it's going to change it, that means it is not equal to 73. It just won't equal 73. It may be smaller, it may be bigger, we don't know. It, we know it's not going to equal it. Which means over here, opposite to not equal to is equal to. Uh, 
let's see here. Let's go down to this one. Just don't worry about this one because I didn't put a value here. Let's do the last two. Chemist invents an additive to increase the life of a car battery. If the mean lifetime of a car battery is with, uh, without the additive is 36 months, let's state the null and null to the hypothesis. Well, what this chemist wants to do is he wants to see if I put this additive in the car battery, it's going to increase. So what does he want to be true? Mu is going to be greater than 36 months. And then we go opposite to that. What's great, opposite to less than, greater than? Less than or equal to 36 months. Last one we'll do today. Contractor wishes to lower heating bills by using a special type of insulation in the house. If the average monthly bill was $78, what would be the null and ultimate hypothesis? What does he want to be true? That's your ultimate hypothesis. Write it down. And then do the SpongeBob opposite for the null. Write it down. So if we take a look at what he wishes to be true, we want the mu, the average heating bill, he wants it to decrease. So that's going to be less than the $78. And the opposite to that, is greater than or equal to $78. Okay, this is hypothesis testing. We have to learn how to write a null and ultimate hypothesis first. Um, the worksheet I gave you, go ahead and write the null and ultimate hypothesis there. Make sure you don't write it big in the middle of it because we're going to work on this worksheet throughout uh, the week here. So write it up in the like left upper left hand corner of the space that you have there, so you have room to do calculations as we go throughout the week because. Um, what we'll do is we'll expand on what we just did today, uh, tomorrow, and deal with the calculations at that point. Other than that, I have nothing else for you. Uh, please keep up with the work. You guys have been doing a great job. Uh, continue to do a great job in regards to keeping up with the work. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll expand on this tomorrow, the hypothesis testing. If you have a chance, go outside for, uh, breathe some fresh air today. Uh, it's supposed to be nice out there. I uh, miss you guys. I wish you were here in class, uh, but we're not here. So uh, let's keep things going positive here. Keep your social distancing. Get ourselves back to some sort of normalcy at that point. Um, other than that, I have nothing else for you. Adios. You guys have a great day. Once again, I miss you.